This is Twit. We're going to do hardware first, right? There's something new yes. in the hardware world. There's several new things in the hardware world, but one in particular I'm interested in, and obviously Jeff is too. What's what's the big new thing? Well, in case you've not been paying attention to the tech news, Intel has released a couple of Battle Mage video cards. Now, Michael Larable over at Phronix has been doing some benchmarking on the B580, which is the faster the cards and has results in both compute and gaming. I don't know if the embargo is released yet on the 570, so we're only going to talk the 580 today. Now, the Battle Mage cards, Battle Mage cards use the XE2 graphics from Intel. And he does make mention that to get the cards to work, kernel 6.12 or greater will be required along with Mesa 24.3 or greater. If you can run even newer, it will be better as Intel has been pushing out updates quite frequently to fix minor issues that have come up in certain situations. Now the tests compare the 580 to older Intel cards and several 40 series Nvidia and 7000 series AMD cards. Now, first, we're going to look at compute, which the results are all kind of rather all over the place. There, there are many compute benchmarks, the cards hanging with a 4070 or 7800 AMD card. And there's others, <clears throat> there's others where it doesn't do so hot. For example, Blender, the 580 is behind the last gen Intel cards, but there is a high kernel latency bug or high latency kernel bug in the driver. And expect that to be fixed in the near future. Uh, Michael even does mention that he's going to really monitor the drivers and as improvements go in, he's probably going to re-benchmark a bunch of things. So now in cases where it doesn't excel and there isn't a driver issue, the Battle Mage cards run right around an NVIDIA 460 or an AMD 7600. I do need to mention that this card is $250 US and that is if you can find it. As of Saturday the 14th, as, as we're doing the podcast now the cards are out of stock at all major retailers i believe the reason being while it isn't the fastest card out there it is the fastest at the 250 dollars price price point in the cost for performance the intel 580 you know for cost versus performance i should say the intel uh, 580 card is crushing amd and nvidia you know it's it's a very high bang for your buck in that lower price point which a lot of people are at you know not everybody can drop monstrous amounts of money on a new video card now i know some of you are saying fine jeff compute is all well and good but i plan to play games and i'm not going to do scientific research on my machine to that i say look at the second article in the show notes where michael has the gaming benchmarks michael has an intel 285 cpu for these benchmarks and he had it as well in the compute benchmarks and he and he doesn't make mention of it in the article, but you do need to have resizable bar to get the most out of this GPU. So you need an Intel 10th generation or newer CPU, or you need an AMD 3000 series CPU or newer. Now you can use it on an older system, but the performance is going to be reduced. So the benchmarks won't apply if you're putting it on an even older machine. Now the games that he tried are a mix of Proton and Native, and we get mixed results. So while most all of the games ran, F122 did have a problem where the game would hang, so it doesn't have a good uh, benchmark result on that one. Hardware Unboxed ran the B580 across a ton of games, and while there were a few that had some issues, almost all of them ran fine. So the card isn't perfect, but the reviewers I've seen have said that Intel is acknowledging the issues and working on the driver to fix the problems. On the Linux side, it's the same story where things are not 100% perfect, but they're 98% perfect. And the drivers are still getting love, so we should see issues fixed soon. Uh, kind of a side note, the first generation from when they originally launched to current state had massive uplift in performance because they were continuously working on the driver. And they know there's issues with the driver, so it's, it's going to get it's going to get love. Now, that might also mean if you're getting a card that you might have to upgrade the kernel to fix an issue if your distribution is a little behind on kernel updates or if there's something coming out in a kernel version or mesa version that you de deem that you have to have right away but after all this benchmarking bottom line is a card cost per performance is just like 
the computation benchmarks and that there isn't anything that can touch it for the price. It's it runs probably around this AMD 7600 or N NVIDIA 460 in performance, you know, maybe slightly behind it right now with the current state of drivers, but it's it's solidly in the neighborhood. Um, I think it's great that Intel's getting the win across the review sites for the card, which Intel needs right now. And keep in mind, the GPU and the CPU teams are totally different. So while we might have issues with our trust in the CPUs, the GPUs are different beasts and have not had any cause for concern. Temperature and power draw for the card's been good. It runs around 65C and 140 watts. Throwing a little cold water on the party for Intel, though, I think it, I would be remiss if I didn't say that we'll be having new cards from both AMD and NVIDIA coming out soon though NVIDIA is expected to come in uh, and, and the NVIDIA cards are expected to come out in January or at least announce the 590 and 580. So getting a 560 series of card might take a while. I don't know of, of the timing of the AMD 8000 series cards. So I know they're not going to compete on the high end, but with this series of cards, you know, I don't know when the 8600 level of card is going to come out. You know, is it going to be about the same time as NVIDIA a lot sooner? I don't know. But we also don't know the pricing. So they might come out, you know, be faster, but might be a lot more expensive. Or they come out at the $250 price point and Intel drops their price. So it's kind of expected that Intel is probably going to drop their price in the future when, uh, when the other cards are released, depending on their performance and value. So if you want to get a new video card and want to try something new, the Intel Battle Mage is a good card. It's good value, and it's definitely a recommended purchase. Across all the different reviewers I've seen, both at Pharonix and across the major you know, gamers, Nexus, J's Two Cents, Linus Tech Tips, and so on, Hardware Unboxed, they all really like the card. So, you know, it's, it's definitely something people have good reviews on. Um, let me know your thoughts on the Discord about the Intel GPUs, and I look forward to reading the comments. Yeah, I I been look been looking very interestingly at this as well. Um, I I don't think it would be I don't remember exactly what I'm running. I'm not sure that it would be an upgrade at this point, um, but for two hundred and fifty dollars, it's really compelling. Um, oh yeah, especially if you're you know, there's a lot of people still on. 900 series cards yeah or, you know amd 580s you know if you're in a thousand series uh nvidia mm -hmm. you know definitely an upgrade and and it's basically the first um it's the first card that's really worth looking at in this price point for a long time now it seems like this is kind of the price point that everybody has has abandoned it's sort of the under 300 dollars range there's not been much yeah. there so yeah, and that's why, you know, people say, well, it's barely hangs with a 460. Well, but the 460 costs more money. You mm -hmm. know, it it doesn't have when you look at, you know, frames per price or per dollar, this Intel card is just really top top of the charts. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. Very cool. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there.